You deserve nothing. You deserve nothing. <laughs> There's nothing really that drains your mana too heavily to be able to uh, to provide that little bit of a counter to it. Looks like we'll... Yeah, there we go. Game back up on screen. It's nothing I didn't even realize we were all. on camera. <laughs> Say that again? I didn't even realize we were on camera again. Uh, that's okay. I could have been doing all sorts of things. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, I, was just, I, was, I, I just didn't want to list off some of the things. So I'll just... just drinking my coffee. Why? Come on, man. I, I understand it's 5 a.m., but... We're going to a game three, that's why. Yeah, but your sleep is going to be butchered now. Caffeine too close to bed's no good. Too late. <laughs> it's already going to happen. I hope we go to a game three, because uh -huh. especially with these two losses, and I'm just, I think we got some good Dota in store for us still. Game one was a nice little appetizer. It was uh, a long game, not Dyer's too much action. I mean, the towards you know, some crazy fights, but. I'm trying to see if this one will have even more action than what we oh. saw prior. Second courier. FNG nearly got a double courier snipe there before the uh, the tangos were able to be delivered through to pure. But he got one from save and was able to block up the hard camp as well. So really nice. Super early stages here for him. Was forced to get the first point into the disruption. Uh, Not the worst. What's going on top lane? <laughs> Notice Director Doko duking it out. And that was all without nightfall as well. So... <laughs> They even have the, the carry to try and offer some assistance. Toronto Tokyo is going to be in some trouble. So he's trying to chase him down to the tree lanes. Got the Oh, nice, dude. And oh, 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 did you see Nightfall gave him a tango? <laughs> like, how often oh. do you see that? Okay. That's some team play right there. Realizing that he's putting his body on the line to enable the Terrorblade to farm. And I mean, Terrorblade's pretty scary still up into this. You know, if you can get up onto that level three, it's a pretty big boost in damage and they're not even going to wait for it. Just looking to drop down the tombstone again, just to completely zone this Skyrath and Magnus out of the lane. So notice he had a great game one but they're really looking to try and limit that effectiveness. They're doing the same thing bottom lane as well. Save and Pure really on the ball with playing aggressively up against Kiritich, seeing that there's nothing the, the Jug's able to do. I mean, he's used all his mana as well. He's got a big six ult to work with, but I mean, great job to be able to zone him out. Only six last hits for, for Kiritich at this stage. It is certainly something that Jug can have a little bit of trouble with. Never really... Uh, is left wanting in terms of his base attack speed, but in terms of the damage, does fall a tiny bit behind some of these other heroes. And well, maybe they're going to be able to make some sort of a spin play happen here, but might just be wanting to wait for that level three as well, with how much the damage does increase and even just the cooldown to be able to more frequently go for these kill attempts. <laughs> saw in game one as well gpk was uh had a great start up against squad x on the pango this time much different 17 and 4 compared to the 15 and 4 so it, it is even between the two but it's not like gpk is getting too much more out of this i love it when people do this again oh, bottom lane. well has he got the oh we actually backed on off and now he's in a lot of trouble because pure with the level up in the call have the kind of helix to work with just yet. Still doesn't have the attack procs, so it's, it's going to be okay. But oh no, oh, they pop the cell. Oh, top lane as well. Notice, well, that's going to be first blood. It's under Nightfall, so notice got a big stick and a Lotus to work with. Skew is going to be up in a couple of seconds as well. So notice gets away and move on bottom lane. Uh, hey, pure. You're going to be able to find this blast. Not enough. They'll get the kill onto F and G though, nonetheless. So, Beppu will be able to strike that. <laughs> nice kill that they were able to land onto Nightfall. Obviously, didn't have the metamorphosis, but uh, was it Notice that got it? Actually, it was. So, really nicely done to be able to give that one over to him, as opposed to uh, Sayush. Just looking to go again once more aggressively in onto FNG, who had just TP'd back into the lane. 
Two points in the blade, Fury again, like just with how farmed Fury is getting off the back of this. Max is probably the hero that he's been spamming the most in pubs these days. It really does feel like it fits his style, you know, all the ways from going back into that that pudge, the, the CK that he liked to build previously on Entity. Give him that real aggressive style that he wants to just be the first one into the fray. I, I hope he's able to have a good transition to the three roll as well, because he was one of my favorite carries to watch uh, or when he had that run with Entity, because he might be in some danger. Well, it's going to be able to help him out a little bit. A lot of stacks are from FNG, so pure falls incredibly low, but not low enough to help get the kill. He had the full five stacks onto him, but not enough still. And now with that, he's uh, three gold away from being able to finish up the Vanguard, and really does feel like he could just look to get even more aggressive than he has been. Just look at it for some quick plays with save. Blinding Light bump back into a, a Berserker's Core, perhaps. Knowing that he's very capable of tanking up all of this creep wave without too much of an issue. Could even potentially look to have save make a rotation like, uh, like he is doing now. To build up some of those stacks inside of the Ancient Camp. Use that to be able to make a rotation towards the mid lane. And how about GPK, who hasn't isn't having as easy of a time as he did last time around. Mm. Say so Squad X is doing a really nice job, and well, he's hoping for a little bit of luck for the rune to spawn bottom. But even if it did, Save was there to be able to cover it. Still, though, the net worth is uh, taking a bit of hit for, for Notice and Kiritich. I mean, we, we mentioned that Notice's lane really started to, to get going once the Vanguard was completed in, in the previous game, but I don't think he was this far behind at this stage of the game in uh, in game one. So a big reason why there is this 2,000 net worth lead for, for Bet Boom. But man, look at FMG already 30 seconds early. And he's, he's ready to go for the, for the Wisdom Rooms. Does mean that Kiritich is alone. So even with the call, pure. A lot of damage to the Juggernaut. Is he going to tick out? The healing ought to work with Kiritich going to be okay, but it, I mean, importantly, you just completely zone him out and all the creeps under the tower, he will not be able to farm. He's going to lose his healing ward short and probably his own life as well if Pure's going to be able to catch up to him. No boots, unfortunately. The axe to work with. Is under attack. It's the extra movement speed for the battle hunger, though, and a TP Ooh, coming in from Squad X. Got to get Pure. You, you have to get Can the axe. It's, it's not enough for just the cold. No points in the chains. That this is going to be a long chase, and he doesn't really have the mana as well, so... Oh, no. Absolutely not, with the uh, the boots being delivered too, and now Pure is just going to farm up one of these stacks. You know, just really look to quickly accelerate that net worth. All the while, GPK was recovering a little bit of that uh, mid lane... Mm. detriment that he was in. Deficit, that's probably the better word to use. Uh, and Kiritich, he's still going into the Battle Fury, so... I'm not sure how I feel about this these days. I know the Maelstrom is obviously not quite as popular as it used to be, and I think that's just a, a factor of how much farm there is on the map, right? Like, it's really just around, like, if you've got a crap load of camps to farm, I... Oh, look at Pure on the bottom side. Did you see that? He used the Tumblr's toy to be able to get rid of the, uh, the healing ward, and then he's looking to just move on away, away from this uh, Juggernaut. No cares in the world for Mr. Pure. A lot of cares though for Sayush. Free kill for GPK. We saw what last game like a 10 minutes 20 blink timing, and he's gonna be a little bit slow on that, but still is gonna be a, a very good timing nonetheless from the tiny. I wanna continue the Probably about the item build from Kiritich. It's going to be, uh, maybe with the, the Battle Fury in particular, even with the Magnus. I mean, we've seen Mags Dyer's have been very, very greedy, and he might be the target of this smoke attempt. That boom has three heroes, a three hero smoke at eight minutes in. You don't see this often, but it looks like they haven't been able to find the read to the wraparound behind the tower with a combination of the meta damage, if it's even needed. Helps secure the kill, and probably even the tower as well. I mean, they got two points in the tomb, so if Mag comes back, he's going to die again. GPK. Okay, might still stick around. But they got huge stacks to take instead. Oh my god. Squad's got the shield to be able to play with. I don't know who got the majority of those stacks. Did you see? Um, 
No, I didn't see Radiant's it. Top tower has but fallen. I mean, tower, much more valuable, you'd have to say. Already a 4k net worth lead for Bet Boom at this stage. So squad might be very hard to kill at this point of the game, but you know, they don't really care about him, right? It's what you do when you've got this hero that's unkillable. You just don't focus it until you feel like you are overly strong Holy as a team. Looking at pure thumb. <laughs> no, I'm looking at goddamn GPK's farm. He's got a blanket. Oh, it's going to get delivered at 10. I mean, that he was 300 gold from his, so... <laughs> Uh, this is really scary territory for VP. These rotations have to start connecting from Squad X, and they might be able to catch up to Drone to Tokyo. So, got the kill on Sayushi is going to be the one that finds it. Yeah, unfortunately, Squad X doesn't get it, but unless they get the kill, and it's not the worst. So, Tokyo goes down. Where'd the rune go, though? Oh, safe took it. Connell doesn't need no haste. Plenty fast. So. How do you look to play for Bet Boom with the blinks though? Because their supports don't provide a whole lot of damage and often Radiant's that's what we see, like a attack. tiny plus one or an axe plus one. So what's kind of the roaming duo situation gonna be like for Bet Boom this game? I think the main priority is just making sure that this uh, this Juggernaut doesn't have too much of a game. Like we can see Pure's looking to come back closer towards GPK, maybe trying to bait out a spin. And well, I think they're happy enough just to push him out of the lane too, right? Like this is another tower that they've looked to claim for themselves. TB is able to still continue farming on the top side of the map. But I mean, again, this is an ax with a, a 10 and a half minute blink dagger vanguard. He could just look to stack up the creep waves, stack up the camps. The same sort of issue that you were talking about with no one really having a ton of damage to combine together with the uh, the ax or the tiny. Kind of uh, VP are in a similar sort of situation, at least until Sayush hits up onto his level six. And well, luckily for him, He's uh, soaking up a lot of that XP in the mid lane. So just one creep away. So that plus the, the medallion, you would assume, is what they're going to need here on VP to maybe consider making that first move. But Pure was dropping kind of low, but it's actually the neutral creeps that have been the biggest threat to him so far this game. Oh. Taking a look at the odds, very, very Bet Boom favored. I feel like that's gonna increase even more. Pretty surely, Bet Boom gonna be able to connect on these blinks. And that, that is still the one thing though. Early blinks are cool and all, but you gotta get kills. If you don't do so, and it doesn't really help out with a whole lot early on. So that's kind of the big thing. Just play aggressive. Continue to limit the farm from a VP because I mean it's an incredibly greedy lineup. You have trio core. The mag once again probably going to be... I can't even go, like, echo into the harpoon this game. Radiant's <sighs> middle tower I, is under attack. My main issue is just where is this damage going to come from? You know, because it's not only the fact that you're playing from 5k behind, but it's what you're playing into as well. Like, you're playing into an axe with Berserker's Call that's going to Radiant's give him bonus 25 armor, plus a vanguard that he's already got. You've got a Terra Blade with 50 million armor, and you've got a Tiny that gets armor from Grow. So the fact that a big portion of their damage is going to be coming from Ember, Jug, Mag, who are... Yeah, they got a little bit of magic, but the majority of it is physical. Mm, they do very, very hard for them. Keep the temp, but it's a pretty Radiant's nice skew out of the tower, but it's really not going to count for anything. I've even got another ward that scouts at FNG, so we'll blink up in a couple of seconds. GPK's able to chase with ease. Kirtage going to have to watch on the side lane as his position five gives another kill over to Bet Boom. No way they see him. Oh, far out. That was way too close. I mean, they'll gladly take a stack, they'll gladly stick around to make sure that they secure this Wisdom Rune as well in the next 30 seconds. And they've even got the tower pushing in as well. So, Nightfall doesn't have the Metamorphosis, so he can't help out in that front, but any time that you're just forcing someone to, to come back here just to maybe push the wave out a little bit further, it's going to be a benefit for you. Goes too deep, Pure's just going to go for the Blink Call. Oh, no. Looks like they're ready for it, though. Potentially even just... Maybe trying to get the wisdom rooms. That's going to be up shortly. But with the tombstone lady, there's no way you take this fight. Maybe we're actually going to leave Tokyo. Okay. I, I thought maybe they were going to try and play around with him with the advantage of the tombstone. But happy with getting the wisdom room and continue to back on off. Because I mean, look at what they're getting on the map. Nightfall continuing to free farm. It's just top of the net worth has gone back and forth between the cores. It was prior pure that had that position. And 
that Nightfall has completely leapfrogged his, his own gold. I mean, they, uh, GBK gives the tip over to Toronto Tokyo, basically saying, you know what, you took the Wisdom Rune, good job, <laughs> you did your thing, but I'm not giving up my life in this potential lead for a, a freaking position 5 undying. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Nearly got the, uh, the Slide of Fist steal on that Wisdom Rune on squad. I was watching to see if he would be able to pull off a Yopage special. <sighs> He's going to do that and a whole lot more this game, though, right? He's... Mm -hmm. He's doing a really good job to keep up in net worth. I mean, he's really the, the one call that's, that's off to a good start from, from VP, but... Scanning. Uh, you were saying before, it kind of needs to be the Ember and Sky together with the Mystic Flare. So we'll, we'll see if they're going to be able to capitalize on some pickoffs across the map, but you're going to have to do it pretty short. This game is really getting out of hand. I mean, they might be able to get save just on his own, but he's got the Pavis, he's got Magic Wand, he's got a Cornucopia as well, just for a little bit of that extra regeneration. So, I mean, it, it's... Again, it's all well and good to get this little bit of extra farm, but in the time that you're farming, Death Boomer just getting further and further ahead. Yep. Jugs barely just finished the uh, the BK, the, sorry, the Battle Fury for himself, so at least he'll start to catch up a little bit faster, but he's coming from a far way behind. The smoke from Death Boomer is not going to be on the mark. They will try and rift down to bottom. Notice he's currently farming. He's got a pretty crafty ward inside the jungle, so they're going to be able to get confirmation of multiple of Bet Boom's heroes down here. Very nice D ward again. So that's two wards that just got claimed. Make it even more difficult for VP to be able to try and farm their way back in. Even just getting a DD rune in that mid lane to be able to combine together with a blink dagger and almost level 11 tiny. He's 25 gold away from the Ogre Axe as well, so... Plenty of ways for him to be able to deal a lot of this burst damage with the rest of the boys. We... haven't got a, a single use of the Culling Blade yet. Not yet, but... It really doesn't feel like they've truly unleashed the beast just yet. Just sitting back, knowing that they're ahead. You start better, you're gonna snowball better. And it's just gonna reach this point where you're like one to two items ahead that you just feel unbeatable. Maybe it's just going to be around the uh, the tier 2 neutral items that they're going to be able to pick up faster than VP and look to really close the map out. Yeah, so they know he's here. Maybe they're going to glimpse him with that ward inside the jungle. GPK is going to try and jump with the double damage rune. Needs to be perfect with the chain control. Dyer's the north. Doesn't get a lot of distance away, but there's going to be no other spells to follow up. He, he does need to be playing on the edge on this Ember Spirit, yeah. right? A lot of the times we see people, you know, they've they gone into the BKB, they get the Ogre Axe first just for a little bit of extra survivability. He needs to rely on big plays. You know, that extra 24 damage from the Mithril Hammer could be the difference between just quickly pushing out a wave and getting out of dodge like he just did. Being able to secure a kill, perhaps. They're going to roast, it looks like, on Bet Boom, so... Three points to him. The Golem is all they need. Smoking up. Got the Blink Dagger on the Magnus. Doesn't seem like they have any idea that this one's going on. Except for a full-on movement towards the Ancient Camps area that most of the time you've had Nightfall farming, but it's a bit of a movement that doesn't really have too much purpose. You know, it, it seems like they're second-guessing themselves with just how aggressive Beth have been playing, so that when they completely shift into another gear and play a lot more passively, even if it's just for a minute, they get caught off guard. Yeah, this is a uh, one nice thing. Triple bounty from Squad X. I don't, I don't know how the hell there's three bounties on the map and 18 minutes in, but someone hasn't been down bottom, so that's a Thank nice it. thing. Concerns though is the fact that you have the Aegis now onto GPK. Nightfall not looking to get involved. I, I'm a little bit surprised I didn't give it to Nightfall still, because I think once he completes a Scardi, they're just going to run down the map and. I think the Scotty is the, really the item to end it. Maybe not to go higher ground, but just to back to back fights and pretty much make it impossible. So I'm intrigued that they give it to Mr. GPK. Radiant I'm still so impressed with how much farm squad's getting though. Radiant like, he is certainly keeping up when he doesn't have pretty much any of the tools to be able to do. Right, he's almost ahead of GPK despite playing what? Three towers down, down, 
Hey, he got three bounty runes, I guess. That helps. But, uh, you, you know, still the back of a much more successful team so far from Bam Boom. He's still keeping up, so nicely done. Yeah. I'm He's getting a couple of cheeky right clicks into the tower, playing that over corrosion and getting on out. Heritage as well, right? I was yep. third in that worth. He's doing the incredible job to keep up in farm. He was like three and a half K behind the Terror Blade, so they're catching up. Closing on to the Manta Star, but still this Juggernaut's gonna need a lot more items. Actually, trying to gear up though for a defense, it looks like from Virtus Pro. So they've been playing the avoid game. They say they feel like they're strong enough to take a fight into the ages. Meta is back up though for Nightfall to work with. Doesn't have that man to deliver just yet, so the fact that no one's defending against the Tokyo is a little concerned. Smoke's gonna pop over the Undyne, but he's at least able to drop the tombstone. Meanwhile, Pure's gonna be in, but the RP's even better. It's on to three, but there's just no follow up. Even with an RP like that from Notice, there is no one there to provide the damage required to turn that fight around. There's an opportunity. And in the end, the door gets slammed shut as soon as it was opened. It's bad boom. Zero casualties from them and now the tower is soon to be under siege I mean, it's, it basically gives you almost permanent use out of that berserkers call right playing together with a coddle three second duration reduce it by six seconds that's why the tip was coming through for pure on to save despite the fact that the initial initiation was all on the back of a great jump by pure tokyo didn't even die either just the one point in the soul rip He's down to that level Radiance 4 tombstone. Maybe he got a Parvis onto himself, used a single healing lotus, and that was enough. Oh. Are you serious? I, this is going to be really interesting. He's got the he got the Ag Shard, so I wonder how you can use you Tombstone now to deal with the Omni Slash. I have no idea what happens. I have to imagine once you get sucked in, it just, yeah. And that is, I think that is really being one of the big critiques for the Juggernaut as well, with... So what's going on mid lane in a second? F and G. Oh, great toss from GPK. And now the Silence is going to be there to follow up as well. They've used a lot of the control, but still the Avalanche is possible to work with. And GPK is up to a mega killing streak here for the Tiny. It's by far the most important hero for them to be able to take out, right, is the Magnus. Notice, once again, he was able to hit a great RP and uh, was even able to skewer back the Undying, even though they didn't actually secure the kill because of Pure, but no Magnus means no one's going to be uh, skewering you back into harm's way. So lanes, once again, being pushed out, and, uh, potentially forcing more of a defensive play as Bet Boom continue to extend their lead. Yeah, so you're saying the, the Omni Slash just... I, I'm in agreement with you. If something is able to be cancelled out by even just a Glimmer Cape, for example, it makes it feel pretty terrible, doesn't it? Anything, man. Like, there's just so much crap that can cancel it. Yules, Yules, yep. Disappearing uh, from existence, like <laughs> the Tombstone. What would you call that? A gobble up? Or? I don't know. Suck it in. Whatever. Bunker. Bunker, bunker yeah. Bunker, yeah. Uh, it's just... It's nullify takes too long. It's like 35 minutes before you're able to address those ultra, ultra defensive items, so... That's not even going to stop the bunker, right? <laughs> no. Close. Close going to hold GPK back. I don't have everyone here from Bad Boom, but it looks like VP just an all-out retreat. Who's going to try and catch up to F and G? They should at least be able to get the shot at the demon. It's pretty deep to buy in the T2 tower mid, but... That's a dieback. Be a very cautious. Squad X wants to jump in, though. I mean, this is a man trying to do it all by himself, but... He's just got no boys that are looking to try and play the game. Ages expires, but who cares? You know, again, no BKB on the Ember Spirit, no Shadow Demon that you have Radiant to contend with. You've got the Metamorphosis available. If they wanted to, they could go up onto the high ground, especially with a level 15. On the TB, that extra 300 health plus the Scardi. It's already so hard for them to get through his HP, but you know, I mentioned the armor. 30 armor against a very heavy physical damage lineup is almost unkillable. They have to be incredibly happy with what they're able to get out of the map off the back of the ages on Beth Boom. The T2 Towers now worth lean up to 17,000. Anything lead for them to work with. I really don't know if that Solar Crest is going to change anything, unfortunately. You know, giving it over to the Juggernaut pre Omni Slash can feel kind of nice, I suppose, but 
It's not like he's getting any amazing procs from it or his damage is off the chain either. Mm -hmm. he, he was, we mentioned before, like he was doing a really good job to keep up in. He was like two and a bit K behind, but it's now up to around 6K off the five minutes of ages they're able to work with. That's just towers, honestly. Like yeah. they've taken five towers and you haven't taken a single one yet on BP. So I wonder if like, even if it means that you have to take a fight that's very scary, you've got to open up this map a tiny bit. Like that top tier one tower, it's at about a third HP. Look to make a play around it perhaps. Radiance top tower is under attack. Seems like whenever they look to do that though, they're always just running into someone. That time around it was Toronto Tokyo TPing away inside of the tree line. Probably a little inadvertent as well. I don't think the uh, the Observer Ward that he placed down previously in the mid lane actually spotted that one out. So a little bit of luck sometimes goes your way. But it feels so frustrating for VP. He's got the gem. It does feel like a little bit of a Hail Mary play from Sayush, but yeah. I mean, when it feels like you can't get outside of your base at all, you know, it's the sort of risk like you it. have to take. Yeah, I... I, I... I think uh, <laughs> I am a very much a gem enjoyer. I don't know if there was any other item you could have got there under a huge ward. Pure though. They're going to start as well, but he's got the BKB to protect him, but it's not going to do much first. The Omni Slash, with all the item advantage that Pure is playing with 2100 health, he shrugs off the ultimate from Kiritic. Now GPK is going to find an opportunity to catch out F and G. The ball is there, so it's a hell of an RP. Is there going to be enough damage to fall up? Bad Boomer just so far ahead. A full five man RP. Nightfall still goes down. Hang on a second. No Sunder Tugrim. GBK dies as well. What? All right, my bad. I mean, I thought no one was dying. I thought that was so far ahead. Was going to get the Sunder off and they all just died. So noticed on the Magnus. All right, baby. We, we might have a ball game. What was that? Like, that was an amazing RP is what that was. Four man, able to land that one. I mean, great reactions, of course, by Pure as well. Just spamming that Berserker's call so the Omni Slash really didn't get insane value. But, I mean, he just gets uh, Chakra Magic. He's able to go back in, but overestimating their, their lead a little bit here. Just with kiting around on that fight, just preventing the Sunder from going up entirely. Although, was Kiritic spinning at the time? He may, you, he may have been, yeah. Because you can Sunder a spinning Juggernaut. No, you can't. You, they you changed know, it. Since when? Dyer's top tower is under the 7.33. They changed, you can't Sunder uh, debuff. Uh, yeah, debuff so the targets. So the way that I saw it since 7.33 is that you can Sunder them. They yeah, don't 7.33C, the they there changed we, it. There we go, yeah. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was wondering if it was a super new change because yeah, you, you knew how it worked previously, right? Yeah, you yeah, gained yeah. the HP, but they didn't lose it. Which yeah, sorry, I thought it was kind of a cool change. I thought it was kind, kind of, of a dumb buff of <laughs> TB, yeah. Not that he sorry. needed it. No, no, I don't think he needed it all. I think a lot of people have got some weird buffs and weird nerfs with the, with the BKB change. I think it's still going to take some time to, to work out what's going on there, but oh, can they repeat that? VP, uh, maybe not like a full five man RP, but you, you're gonna have to get multiple heroes. We even see the change from Mag. We were mentioning like early, like can he go the, the kind of Echo and the upgraded version of that route? And he's got a, an eighth lens into, I believe, Shadow Blade and maybe even a refresher queued up. So he's all on kind of this spell casting initiator Mag this game. Has it's signs of life though, Denok. I mean, that is the main thing. The fact that one fight from 7% to 22%, we might have a game. They, they still got to win some repeat, but Jog's second in net worth now. Again, we've been seeing the praise of Squad X. He's work on Ashivas as well. Unfortunately for them, Roche is going to be up. So, the Boomer in a prime position to be able to take this. They're going to be praying for a... Uh perhaps a psychic headband for the Magnus because it really does feel like it's going to need to be the, the notice show. Excuse me, the notice show, right? He's going into the Aether Lens just to provide him that little bit of extra skill range, keeping them away from all the auras, from the blink uh, coming through from pure to be able to go for the save. So it's called Grab Ally. Yeah, I just, I just say that. <laughs> I was going to say it. It looks... 
It doesn't look like an undying ability. It, do it does, but like if you take a look at the style of the other abilities you got, it, it, it is kind of different. Very deathly. Yeah. This one seems, I don't even know if I would call it holy or not, but... Nice scan. We'll be able to see them coming through the rift. They're still on Prowl though. Again, Aegis as well, given over to GPK. So, once again, Tiny's going to have the Age of the Mortal to work with, and Cheese is in the backpack of Nightfall, who is under a ward. Right, what did this nice get? What did he get from the tier 3 token? That's what I want to know. I need to use it now before a fight does break out. Okay, that's not terrible. Ceremonial rope, just a little bit of extra duration on the RP. Certainly doesn't hurt. Also amping up the damage coming through from the Skywrath and the Maelstrom. Shadowblade's a very interesting choice from the mag. I, it, it's all just being about outplay though, right? Yeah. It's... With some rune now available, GPK is going to be the one to pick it up. Realizing that again, still a big portion of their damage is physical. So that extra seven bonus armor never hurts. He got it. Even more damage. Are you serious? Okay. Axe had not... What? Huh? Was Axe ahead of him? Did he... Is Axe Borg one on the Karia? Not sure. I'm not sure how that Maybe, works. Uh, Axe must have been just ahead of him. Yeah, he must have. Huh. Oh, Pew's on the prowl. Think he would be pretty nice. Any kind of more heroes inside the call. It's a very awkward spot to be taking a fight, though. Even GPK's ready in the wings to try and fall up on someone else, but he'll just commit to get rid of FNG's life. And even just having the Ogre Seal totem as well, so you don't even need to rely entirely on the Blink Dagger for a lot of those kills. I wonder if they saw that uh, that haste rune, and that's why Pure is wanting to pick it up, just so that he can continuously run at people again. This combo, the Axe and the Keeper of the Light, really can't be understated how effective it is, is just having that uptime of the Berserker's Core. Basically giving you two seconds of downtime. Does anyone on their team have a... a uh, what's it called? Ceremonial robe doesn't look like it. Do you have two Ogre Seal totems and two Titan Slippers though? Very balanced. We saw last game how difficult it was for Notice to be able to find the initiations on a high ground defense and we'll see if it's going to be similar this game with the Tombstone lay it down. With the meta set up as well. Beppu, Beppu, what a bad one, a Silent save. Oh, he's on point. Instant use of the Orchid. Stops him short and now pure. They're going to be able to get the core drag back. Squad X falling low inside it. Can he get the remnant out? They chop him down. Oh, pure, pure. Just an individual Bruins out of Bet Boom and we're able to crack the high ground. Full set of barracks down at bottom and I didn't look for more as well. I mean, this is where the advantage of having Toronto Tokyo on your team really comes in handy. Up oh, oh, they made a bit of a jump here. It's just onto an illusion this time around. But uh, Toronto Tokyo obviously having played with well, what some people would say is the king of Magnus of these days in Collapse. He's like, all right, what did you hate playing against? Rubik is one, and you would have to say until he's got BKB, Orchid is the other. Great positioning by save, just making sure he's nowhere near the rest of the team and just spamming that Orchid on the ground next to the main targets. They, they made them. They, they made sure to clump together Nightfall and GPK in the one spot, just making it too good to be true. Tired, it's Megas, dude. Yeah. Man. It, it's a tiny with Titan Sliver. You know, we can get patches, we can get new maps, but some things never change. Yeah, it's gonna be a tiny look and try and get some more kills as well. <laughs> Down FNG. She was gonna be able to run into the sky. A dunk to take away the life. Nice sidestep from Pure. See what they're going to be able to do. One last defense. A lot of damage on a pure. They're able to find an opportunity to pop the BKB and look to turn, but the banishment's going to be able to keep Squadex alive for the moment. Give me two seconds. Yeah, the meta's pretty uh, unbeatable at this point. Did you see the team pause? They're going to be looking at Nightfall. No, he doesn't have that Aegis on him. It is the target. There's no here. Pure wants to go that long wrap around. There he is. That's an RP just onto the tiny. They're going to be able to drop the Omni Slash, but he's got the ages. Two ultimates. Just for an ages of the Immortal. It's going to mean that this second game will be going in the way of a bad boom. 
and they're going to be up to 2 and 0. Well, the debut of Virtus Pro in the Summer Tour is not the debut they would be hoping to remember. And seems like, Deno, the, the trend might be continuing. It's another 2-0 versus one of the top three teams in